CM Punk joining the UFC in 2014 was one of the most unusual announcements the company has ever made. The man who would be entering the promotion had zero MMA experience. But prior to entering the sport, CM Punk was a superstar in the WWE. We've all seen this story before with Brock Lesnar. But CM Punk's was way different. So how good was he actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Phil Brooks, who is most famously known as CM Punk. This is a video a lot of you requested, and for the most part, it was mostly as a joke. Because CM Punk's two-fight run has been widely criticized by MMA fans. But there's also a part of me that gives respect to what he did during this time. So let's take a look at CM Punk's MMA career to really understand how good he actually was. CM Punk, who was a longtime fan of the UFC and MMA, announced that he signed a multi-fight contract with the UFC on December 6, 2014 at UFC 181. In this announcement, the 37-year-old CM Punk would say MMA was his new career path and that his time in the sport was limited so it would essentially be now or never. He openly admitted that he was there to get into a fight regardless if he was doing the ass kicking or getting his ass kicked. And that was all the information we got. We didn't know when or who he was going to fight, or even what weight class he was going to fight at. In the month after this interview, CM Punk would move to Milwaukee to train under coach Duke Rufus at Rufus Sport MMA, where he would train with the likes of Anthony Pettis, Tyron Woodley, and Ben Askren. Now what did the MMA audience think about all this? Some people were excited as they were fans of CM Punk back in his WWE days. But most did not respect the decision to allow a 37 year old man to enter the top tier league of fighting. Especially a man with no prior MMA experience whatsoever. The signing truly did go against what the UFC avoids when signing a fighter. But the biggest reason they decided to sign CM Punk was because of his popularity in the WWE. And similar to how Brock Lesnar was a pay per view draw in the UFC, CM Punk would be that as well. So of course the UFC was going to push CM Punk and that involved him being in the main card on the pay per view. In fact, his debut at UFC 203 against Mickey Gall was the third fight on the main card, which is a pretty huge spot for someone who had no MMA experience. This decision would cause even more controversy as many MMA fans believed CM Punk did not deserve such a high profile fight in MMA without having to actually earn it. Even some fighters like Nate Diaz would share their dislike for CM Punk entering the UFC and receiving a huge promotional push. Diaz would bring up that it takes some fighters years to get the opportunity to not only fight on the main card of a pay per view, but in the UFC period. And for an amateur like CM Punk to come in and fight immediately with the pros would essentially lower the credibility of the fighters and of the promotion. Diaz would continue that it would be impossible for him to join the NBA and become a star. So why was it the case for CM Punk who was coming from the WWE to the UFC? Now his opponent Mickey Gall who was a brown belt in Jiu Jitsu came about after Mickey defeated Ron Templeton in his his debut fight on November 21st, 2015. In attendance was Dana White who was filming his show Dana White's Looking for a Fight where he travels around to find new upcoming talent for the UFC. After Gall's victory, he would call out CM Punk in his post-fight interview and this got Dana White interested. The 23-year-old would be signed by the UFC and make his debut against Mike Jackson. Dana White confirmed that if Mickey won his debut in the UFC, he would go on to fight CM Punk. On February 6, 2016, Mickey would go on to defeat Mike Jackson within 45 seconds in the first round by rear naked choke. Afterwards, CM Punk and Mickey Gall met in the middle of the ring and the fight was official. So almost two years after he announced that he was signing with the UFC, CM Punk finally made his debut on September 10th, 2016. The fight would be held at 170 pounds. The MMA audience had a mixed bag of emotions towards this fight going into it. Some were excited to see CM Punk fight as nobody but his teammates knew how he fought. Some were looking forward to a potential failure in his debut as many believed he was going to get destroyed by Mickey Gall. And that's basically what happened. Seconds into the fight, CM Punk would rush in only to be taken down. Gall would land some powerful ground and pound strikes from above that truly introduced CM Punk into the MMA world. He would control CM Punk on the ground with ease and would eventually get a hold of his back. After landing more strikes from above, Mickey Gall would finish CM Punk 2 minutes and 14 seconds into the first with a rear naked choke. In the post-fight interview, CM Punk would say that despite the loss, he had the time of his life in the cage. A lot of his inspirational speech would be him telling the crowd to keep going and never to give up. He would finish the interview off by confirming that he will be back to fight again. Now if you think him fighting again for the UFC after this one-sided loss was crazy, what was even more wild was how much he got paid. CM Punk's disclosed fight purse for this match was $500,000. And of course this sparked even more controversy as you compare other fighters on the card like Fabricio Verdum who defeated Travis Brown that night and earned $375,000. Even CM Punk's opponent Mickey Gall would only get paid $30,000 for his win. 
And with all of this happening during the peak height of Conor McGregor's run, who also received the extra promotional push from the UFC due to being a huge pay-per-view draw, it really seemed like the UFC was changing in favor of who sells the most tickets rather than who was the best fighter. Now, many believe CM Punk was very unimpressive in his MMA debut, but honestly, we didn't really get to see him fight. He was taken down immediately and was on the defense before he got finished. CM Punk said he would fight again, but he had no exact timeline on when that would be as he wanted to get back to the drawing board and improve on his game. So almost two years after his first fight, 39 year old CM Punk would come back on June 9th, 2018 to fight Mike Jackson at UFC 225. Mike Jackson of course was the man who Mickey Gall had to defeat before fighting CM Punk. So this matchup with Jackson and CM Punk would be the battle of two 0-1 fighters looking for their first professional win in MMA. And the biggest contrast from CM Punk's second fight in comparison to his first was that this one lasted all three rounds. Which means we really got to see CM Punk's skill set as an MMA fighter. In the first round, Punk would start off aggressive with leg kicks and knees. Honestly, he showed some promise in the early minutes of this fight. But as he did rush in to attack Mike, he would get countered by shots that would eventually tire him out and slow him down. By the end of the round, CM Punk was able to take Mike to the ground. In the second round, CM Punk was exhausted and Mike Jackson began teeing off. Mike would land combos and dodge any of CM Punk's attacks. This would only lead him to being taken down where Jackson would showboat with his ground and pound. CM Punk would attempt submissions off his back but with no success. By the third round, all of CM Punk's attacks were easily telegraphed by everyone watching at that point. He was tired and unable to land anything significant because of it. Mike Jackson would ultimately stay on top of CM Punk before the end of the final bell. And there, he would go on to win the unanimous decision by the judges. But his showboating performance where he could have finished the fight did not impress the crowd or Dana White who cut him from the promotion after this win. The fight itself was heavily criticized for being on the main card of the pay-per-view event. As Joe Rogan would put it, MMA fans want to see elite matchups on the main card. And when you have fights like Curtis Blades vs Alistair Overeem on the undercard of the same event, it really shows a level of disrespect to world class fighters who've been in the game for years. CM Punk's performance itself was considered to be not good amongst the MMA audience. The main takeaways were that CM Punk was stiff, slow, and not very athletic. He didn't have any defense in his stand-up which would ultimately lead him to being countered easily and this would cause him to slow down. Plus, once his gas tank emptied out early in the fight, it made his performance look all that much worse. After these back-to-back -back losses, Dana White would say that CM Punk would probably not fight in the UFC again. When asked if he was finished with MMA, he would say the door was still open on possibly coming back. CM Punk would go on to sign with Cage Fury fighting promotions as a commentator. But as for fighting, he hasn't done that since 2018. And with rumors that he will go back to the WWE, I would say his short-lived MMA career is over. So after going 0-2 and in MMA, how good was CM Punk actually? Skill and talent wise, he wasn't very good. The critique on him being stiff, slow and unathletic is pretty accurate when it comes to how he fought in MMA. He was unable to take a punch without getting hurt or slowing down and this greatly affected his two performances. Joe Rogan would say CM Punk lacked talent in terms of being an MMA fighter. And maybe he was right as CM Punk trained under Duke Rufus for 4 years and was unable to show that he could win even one fight in the UFC. But as much as we judge CM Punk for his skills as a fighter, he showed tremendous heart through this run. The reality is, CM Punk did not need to fight in MMA. He created a legacy in the WWE that not only built him a huge following, but also a huge net worth. So him becoming an MMA fighter was purely based on him doing it for fun. He wanted a new challenge in life and that's what MMA gave him. And yes, he did not find the success that he wanted to have, but his back was against the wall as he entered the sport at 37 years old and had zero experience in fighting. Yet he still made his debut in the biggest MMA promotion in the world. Debut fights are nerve wracking enough, but to do it with millions of people watching must be a whole nother level. Especially when most of those people are in favor of seeing you fail rather than succeed. That's why when I see people making fun of CM Punk, I think they're hypocritical as they wouldn't dare to step inside a cage to fight someone. And to the MMA fans and fighters who resented CM Punk due to the extra push he got from the UFC, I don't think you should take it out on him in my opinion. It was the UFC that allowed all of this to happen because they wanted to cash in on CM Punk. And they should have knew that as much revenue as he was going to bring to the company, the credibility of being a top tier organization with world class fighters will decrease. We saw it all the time in Bellator and I think fans were disappointed that it was slowly making its way to the UFC. But CM Punk didn't ask for all of this. They just gave him an opportunity that he couldn't refuse. He would go on to say that he wanted to 
start his MMA career on the local circuit, but the UFC basically helped him fast track the entire process. Regardless, CM Punk didn't seem to care about what the haters had to say, especially after his losses. In the end, he did what he always wanted to do, no matter what the outcome or reaction was going to be. CM Punk found his success in MMA by actually trying and going for it. Even though he wasn't a winner, he got himself in a fight and because of that, he had the time of his life. My name is Keon and this was my take on how good CM Punk actually was. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below because I'd love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all out for now, so I'll see you in my next one.